Uh, it's great to meet again on an occasion like this and touch base on uh, some of the really important uh, progress that's going on in education. And I want to thank uh, Angelo Gavrilatis, the president of the AUU, for extending this invitation. Uh, thank the AUU for its continuing efforts on behalf of its members who do remain the backbone of our nation's public schools. Uh, to my parliamentary colleagues who are here, um, I want to acknowledge uh, your presence uh, and also um, the traditional owner recognition uh, that has already been given here. Uh, I notice that the new Victorian Premier, Mr Bailiu, has released his ministers from the formal Indigenous acknowledgement process. So I do want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people. I want to pay uh, our respects to their elders and their laws. Um, in releasing his ministers from the formal Indigenous acknowledgement process, uh, the Premier said that it shouldn't be reduced to a mere formality, that it should be meaningful and heartfelt. Well, uh, acknowledgement of country should be an appropriate formality, but I make the point that we acknowledge traditional owners not because it's compulsory, but because it's always heartfelt. Uh, it's an important and constant recognition. Uh, I should add, um, given the week that we're in, that reconciliation starts with recognition, but it can only end where there's equality of opportunity. And when we have such massive gaps in school attainment between <laughs> Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students and non-Indigenous Australians, we know that reconciliation has a long way to go uh, and that all of us in this room have a big role to play in getting there. Uh, this gathering today is in honour of public education. Um, so uh, it's appropriate that, given that we're at the start of Reconciliation Week as well, that we do remember uh, some of the big challenges that confront us in respect of Indigenous education. Uh, this government is profoundly committed to closing the gap and recognises that education sits at the centre of that endeavour. Uh, and we do expect to continue and to build that effort uh, in the coming months. Um, I want to briefly reprise some remarks that I've made recently in a variety of forums because we are honouring public education. When I spoke to the Grattan Institute in March, I said that, and I quote, government schools are the backbone of our education system the place where most students' formal education begins, the crucible of the democratic right to accessible, affordable, quality education. I went on to say that government schools are the foundation of Australian education. They must exist in every community where there are enough children to justify their establishment. They take all comers and are, there for many, the only path out of economic or personal disadvantage. And I said again, the success of Australian education is predicated on the existence of strong, vibrant, high quality public schools. And I think it's appropriate to repeat those remarks for you today. Um, Angelo and members of the AEU, students who attend Australian public schools are receiving a fine education one that equips people for work, for further education and training, one that equips people for life in a culturally diverse, democratic society, but more than that, education that allows for personal growth and fulfilment. Now, some of you would know that Lindsay Connors argued in her 2010 Henry Parks oration that Parks' vision for public education is of even more lasting significance to our future as a democracy than the structural arrangements that brought us into a federal system. There may be some debate about that, but I think the important point is that she's arguing that the commitment to public instruction enabled democratic process, that only informed citizens can engage democratically. And that's correct. But it must also be acknowledged and understood that in Australia, the provision of education has never solely been a public enterprise. Our education systems always included independent and Catholic schools, schools that parents have chosen for a variety of reasons. 
So I will therefore be very clear in all forums that notwithstanding a clear and unequivocal commitment to public education, the government recognises and supports parents' choice of school, public, independent, Catholic, and will do so with continued investment. The fact is, we want every school to be a great school. Without sounding naive, I believe that the way forward is predicated on respect for the sincere and legitimate beliefs of those on both sides of the debate. We want to end the decades-long school funding war created by our political opponents, the Coalition, and find a solution that's fair and equitable and transparent. To some other issues briefly, yes, the government's education agenda is immense, and despite differences of views, we can all agree, I hope, that there's never before been a time when the policy debate is so wide, nor when school education has been so much at the forefront of federal government policy. Investment in public education and education across the sectors at unprecedented levels. We've almost doubled the education investment of our predecessors to more than $64.9 billion. The national partnerships that Angelo spoke of, a $2.5 billion investment reaching deep into our schools and into our most disadvantaged communities too. And despite claims, somewhat hysterical, that our national partnerships are fully, that about our national partnerships, I beg your pardon, they are fully funded and future funding arrangements will be considered in the relevant budget periods. And that's the case with any government program. Angelo's opening remarks about the success of these programs, in particular schools, was fantastic. And it's important to hear because at the same time, we've transformed school infrastructure across the country with the nation's largest school building program. The My School website, you've complained about it, but now find it's useful. And I understand, <laughs> oh, listen to this. Is it two o'clock or is it? Uh... <laughs> and I do understand that you're in favor of rewarding teachers, but I do know that you have strong views about how that should occur. I know that you support national teacher standards, national teacher pre-service requirements, and with some reservations, the national curriculum. Look, we have listened, and we will continue to listen. Your views on these matters are understood, and they are respected, if not always agreed or shared. And I think the respect and the continual dialogue is the key to a productive, ongoing relationship with the AEU, and that's one that I expect to happen. I visit public schools. I talk to public school teachers. I understand the work that's done, uh, along with my colleagues here who are members in their electorates. I see the way in which teachers in public schools change lives. I value, recognise and respect the work of public schools and public school teachers and of the union which represents them. So I do appreciate the opportunity to make these few remarks. I look forward to our continuing engagement. I know that it will be robust and I very much hope it will be constructive. And I want to finish with a quote from an education academic that Angelo assures me is one of the best. Uh, I'm not always sure I agree with the author. I've got to say that a couple of principals and others sent me a couple of copies of this book, so I, I have now had the opportunity to read it on more than one occasion. But the quote, nevertheless, I think is appropriate for us. Unless schools provide our children with a vision of human possibility that enlightens and empowers them with knowledge and taste, they will simply play their role in someone else's marketing schemes. Unless they understand deeply the sources of our democracy, they will take it for granted and fail to exercise their rights and responsibilities. The author, of course, Diane Ravitch. And I have to conclude by saying public education's role in that respect is vital. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.